Thank you for agreeing to sit down with me. We um, look at this and we say, hmm, here's a woman who has never held a public office before, and you decide to go straight to the top. I mean, this is like the number one office in the state of Alabama. What makes you convinced that you're ready for that? It's the heart, I, I believe. I see so much that needs to be done. And um, for years, I've been battling with what you call stepping out of, out of the boat into the water. Out of so, the comfort zone, sort uh, Right, of. right, mm -hmm. right. And so I decide, well, you know, it, it is time. It is time, well, you know, what have I to lose? I have more to gain, I believe, than to lose. So. All right. Yeah. If you were to win your party's nomination, though, I mean, you're going to go up against one of the most popular governors in yeah. the entire nation with a 62% approval rating. Yeah. That's very difficult. You couple that with the fact that there hasn't been a Democrat elected to a statewide office in Alabama in 20 years. So political experts would look at you and go, you've got an uphill battle and that's saying it nicely. Do you agree with them? I've heard, well, not only people, you know, in, in the political world has said that, but just, you know, random, just regular people have said that. I was, well, you know, it's, it's a battle. And, and this is not something that we are alluded to. We have, all of us have had to undergo battles, what we would call uphill. Um, and each each level is 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 more of a of 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 a heated, I guess. Just speaking of life, so I, I I don't see it as any different than just regular problems that we have to incur throughout life. So, all right. So well, what what would you bring to the governor's office for the people of Alabama? Well, um, because I am more of a I'm a people person. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, community-minded. I, I love people. I, I, I will listen, for one. And I'm also the type of person that believe in all of us, you know, coming together, unity, and working out our problems. It shouldn't be one sect, one party, because we're all of all of us are in it together. So it's going to take us. So because I'm the type of person, individual that that does listen. Uh, I don't like schism. I don't like division. You know, it's just what we were taught growing up. Um, together we stand, united, you know, mm -hmm. but um, divided we fall. And it seems like because we have been so divided, we could see the demise. The whole world <laughs> sees the demise. So this is one thing that I'm bringing. And I've, I've also experienced both sides of the railroad track. You know, I've, you know, I'm, I'm an African American, but I've also lived among other, you know, what I call our counterparts, those who are different from me, mm -hmm. um, those who have, you know, wealthy, those who are poor. So I understand um, both aspects of, of life. Listening is such a key, key point for any politician to, to bring to the table. In your opinion, you mentioned, alluded to this just a moment ago, in your opinion, what would it take to bring Alabama into a position where we are truly a two-party state? I have lived here long enough to know when it was all Democrats, now all Republicans. How do you get that two-party system? Well, for one, okay, one thing, um, I've, I have not made it, a, a, you know, haven't slighted the fact that my campaign is based on the Word of God. Okay, here we are, we are in the Bible Belt, so it's been told. And, um, but there has not been much living. Mm. You know, you, you, it's good to talk it, but you must walk it. Faith without works is dead. So um, that's gonna be a challenge for those who, um, who claim to be what you would call evangelicals or, um, but I'm more of, of an ecclesiastical type. You know, my thing where if you're evangelizing is what are you evangelizing? Mm -hmm. Is it truth or a lie? And I've seen a lot, and I'm not so much as throwing stones at the Republican Party, but there are others who don't um, say that they are Republicans, but they still think, you know, adverse okay. to what the Word of God is. Are you following me? You know, I, so I am. Saying? I am understanding. So my thing is, it's, it's time for truth. Um, 
without uh, proper knowledge, without the knowledge, then as according to the Word of God, the, my people perish, that's what he says. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of the, the demise. We have watered down um, government. Mm -hmm. We have watered down the Word of God. And to me, they go hand in hand, you know, God and government. He is the governor because he is the creator of the whole universe. He is the authority, okay. And so we all have to comply because God wants us all to be unified. That's, that's my perspective. That's your perspective. That's my perspective. Okay. Yeah. Regardless of who wins the Democratic nomination though, for governor, <clears throat> pardon me, history is going to be made in that the Democratic Party in this state will have at the head of its ticket an African American. What does that say to you individually and what should it say to the state as a whole? I don't look at it as that. <laughs> I really don't look at it as making history. I look at it as making change, you know, okay. um, taking the conservative way of looking at things. That means to me that it's the same old way that we've been doing it. And according to Einstein, Albert Einstein, he says, do it the same thing over and over again. He said he calls that insanity. insanity. And what a lot of people, and expecting the different results, but what a lot of people don't realize with Einstein, Einstein was a man who had disability. His disability was autism. Mm -hmm. But yet he was deemed and noted as being the most um, remarkable the most brilliant. brilliant man, that's right, mm -hmm. you know? So if he has a disability, and a dis and autism is, is viewing things differently, is we will say that uh, it does, your brain doesn't function as normal, okay? So, but if that man <laughs> saw our craziness, he saw that and still dealing with his his scientific things you know I, I can see him now he's just still a dealing and dealing dallying and saying what he needs to say and going about his business and here we are stupefied of what this man said so um, I agree with him so it's, it's just change, it's change. Okay. It is change if you were to be elected governor could you share with us what your top agenda would be for the state what okay. what really would you like to push in office? Oh Lord, it's, you know, right now, and it's changing, although all of my issues that I've um, posted, like education, um, e economy, criminal lottery, justice, I've that. been talking about the lottery, mm -hmm. and, and it seemed like right now, what is so prevalent now in this season, from all of the shootings and the killings, my thing is, is pushing um, awareness, a safety of, of the, the gun safety. Okay. We have to prepare our children, we have to prepare our teachers, our families, you know, we, we grew up, you mm -hmm. and I, in the era that um, we were taught how to um, look for strange things you know, mm -hmm. in our schools, mm -hmm. we were. Absolutely. We were taught to not talk to strangers and, 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 and how to, to just be very conscientious of where we are. We were taught that in school. We were also taught, um, taught of, of fire safety mm -hmm. and all these other things. You know, what would you do if there was a burglary and all these? So I, I, it seemed to me it's, it's not being taught as much in school. Um, in our families, um, so gun, gun safety awareness, and awareness. Safety, and awareness. Yes, and another thing, and with that, in regards to that, um, one of the things I would love to do as governor is to uh, propose an executive order to get um, the the age risen up to age 21 so that they Before won't could purchase? Be, 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 to purchase, yes, so that to purchase. How would you go about working with a state legislature that most likely will stay in the hands of the Republican Party right now? And you would also be working with a Republican lieutenant governor because the Democrats are not even running a candidate for, mm -hmm. for lieutenant governor, mm -hmm. but it would be that Republican lieutenant governor who holds the gavel in the state Senate. How would you go about all of the things we've talked about working then in that kind of an environment? Well, I'm a mom, okay? <laughs> so mom has to come on in. I have to put the mom hat on that I see it. 
And, and it doesn't always, what we decide is not going to always be agreeable to the rest. That's not fair. You know, I see a lot of immaturity in um, legislation. I see a lot of that in um, going back and forth. And that's one of the things I, I don't like. I don't like procrastination. I don't like putting things off. I don't like all this arguing back and forth. Are we going to do it or are we going to not, not do it? So um, being executor, the governor, yeah. I, because I don't like that. If we cannot come to an agreement, I will have to do an executive order. We're just going to have to stop this nonsense. I mean, Mama just going to have to do it. <laughs> so, um, but that, that's how I see it. We, we have to do that until we can come to an agreement. I still go back to the word. I believe that if we have to work together. And how can two walk together except there be an agreement? It's still about the citizens, the well-being of our state going back and forth. That's a waste of time when you know the answer. Let's say when you strictly know the answer and when you're having to deal with your own um, agenda, mm -hmm. you got to put that aside because it's not about you and it's not about me. It's about the whole. Mm -hmm. So we've got to grow up a lot. We have to grow up a lot because this is a matter of life or death. And you see our children are dying. Young people are dying. Those who are able to get the guns off of the streets, I mean, just black market or whatever. They're dying, mm -hmm. okay? And there should not be. And my heart is just, it, it aches. It aches. And because of our mother, Alabama, she's aching, you know, so. Ms. Flowers, I have one final question okay. for you. If you don't win this time around, you've now been in the political arena and you've seen this, would you consider running again? That's a good question. I may and I may not. I may have someone else. I may um, help someone um, and, and encourage them and give them the knowledge that I've gained mm -hmm. and um, through this race. I don't know. It's just one of those things. I just have to go back to God and say, well, Lord, <laughs> what do you think? Do you want me to do it again? Um, so it, it's contingent upon what he says. Uh, very fair yeah. answer. Yeah. Yolanda Flowers, thank you so very much thank for joining you, us. Thank you, Ms. Health. I appreciate it. Okay. So kind. Thank you.